What's up guys, how's it going out there? You're listening to the BS Averages podcast. This is your host Abhinav and along with me we have uh, my co-host Anudeep. What's up guys? So uh, today we're going to do a beer review. Uh, it's going to be interesting, uh, which is part of our vintage stash series. We've been doing that for quite a bit of time. So going forward, you're going to see more of that on the Beer Savages podcast. So what's up, man? How's it going? Doing well. Uh, I'm excited for this. Uh, finally, we're doing uh, the vintage stash yeah, series a after a while. Yeah. yeah. So what do we have in the studio today to knock it out? I mean, I'm really excited for this beer for one reason that I haven't tried it before. Oh, yeah. Me neither. Uh, and uh, I'm glad that you brought you bought it from uh, Bangkok, uh, so which I'm really excited for because I mean th- this beer is a Flanders Red. Um, this is a Rodenbach Vintage, the 2016 Vintage. Uh, Asian oak furrows. Uh, furrows are those large wooden uh, oak barrels that um, you know the beers are aged in these barrels to get some uh, you know to mature and. Uh, probably gets a li- get a little bit of that tannins and some sort of that wild yeast and um, sour character yeah um, so uh, but yeah I mean this is this is a uh, um, vintage is straight from a barrel so that's why you see a uh, footer number uh, 222 oh, on this wow. so what else have you tried in uh, Rodenbach uh, Flanders Red series so far uh, in Rodenbach I tried the classic Okay. Which is the classic, uh, and it's still a blend of uh, a portion of uh, uh, a young Flanders red and uh, a portion of the uh, uh, portion of the uh, aged one. So, uh, but uh, did, did you try Rodenbach before? I haven't tried any Rodenbachs before, so I'll be. Uh, I'm actually very interested to try this one out. But you tried uh, the Flanders red. I've tried the uh, Duchess de. Borgione? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Borgione. Is that the Flanders red or is that Wood Brun? Duchess is a Flanders red. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, tried, I guess yeah. I've tried one. One classic style. That's a classic style, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think Rodenbach has Grand Cru. Yeah, yeah so. As part of the Flanders. Yeah, so they have uh, like three, uh, I think maybe more than three. Uh, but when it comes to the classics, you have like uh, a classic which is widely available uh, throughout the United States and obviously Europe. Uh, but I think uh, the second one, like you mentioned, the Grand Cru, I think this is, uh, so as as you get to the bottom of this, like you have Classic, you have uh, Grand Cru and you have uh, Vintage. Yeah. Uh, so Vintage has more of that age character uh, and Grand Cru is kind of like it sits in the, uh, in the middle where uh, uh, okay. it still has a higher portion of uh, the aged beer. But, but I think the Classic uh, is... Maybe I might be wrong, but that's the it, it might be like a one third portion of uh, uh, aged beer and two third of uh, young beer. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, um, so before we get to it, uh, do you just want to tell everyone what, what to expect out of a Flanders Red in general? I, don't, I think you can do it better than me, you've tasted a lot. So, and also, how does it compare to Wood Broom? How is it different? Like in a quick note. Yeah, it's funny that you brought this up. Like usually um, there was never a distinction. Uh, oh. Even to this day uh, in, in Europe, especially in Belgium, in, in the Flanders region, uh, people treat these beers as, as pr- pretty much the same kind. Mm-hmm. So Udbrun and uh, uh, the Flanders Red have always been treated as the uh, like sour uh, brown beers. Uh, so they call this red brown beer. And they call the uh, old brown, brown beer. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, so Flanders Red is from West Flanders and um, um, old brown is uh, from East Flanders. Um, oh, okay. So that's a little, but they, they still belong to the same family of uh, dark right. sour beers. Right. You know, um, but yeah, so one, uh, I think the distinction was made by Michael Jackson, beer writer. Uh, he kind of identified these two as separate beers. Uh, not that Belgians cared much, uh, but I think yeah, he I did it for, for yeah. us uh, yeah. to <laughs> yeah. uh, for us to understand it better. But uh, I think Rodenbach has made it quite popular, uh, especially this beer, this beer style. Uh, back in 1821, they were adapting the British brewing tradition, especially the blending techniques mm-hmm. and aging beers in those, uh, uh, those yeah. oak footers. Uh, so... Yeah, um, 
usually if out of a uh, flanders red uh, you can expect some kind of that fruity like like you're talking black cherries red currants um uh, those kind of uh, fruity notes uh, along with yeah. some along with some esters like like pear or apple uh, okay. and uh, maybe some kind of spicy peppery phenols from uh, oh, it's okay. all coming from the east and yeah. uh, uh, there's like a, a really expressive note from the malts uh, like vienna munich and some caramel malts and those are all, all specialty malts can kind of give you that like rich toasty bready and some caramelly notes mm-hmm. um, so this is more like a more you know quite comparable to a fruity red wine where you get some yeah the fruit uh, you get some acidity and uh, like acidity you're talking about the acidic acid more than the lactic because right, uh, yeah. these styles have that really well known acidic acid, acid ca- character from the bacteria acidobacter Um, yeah. So and also, I mean, this is a complex beer. Usually, um, as as the beer ages, yeah, it kind of picks up uh, uh, some interesting notes from Brettanomyces. Ooh, so, so those fruity notes that you it. get, it's kind of like a combination of uh, you know, different things from from the malt oxidation, from long aging with Brettanomyces and uh, Saccharomyces yeast. So it, it's a combination of all those things. Uh, that's what makes it more complex. um but yeah so that's a uh, that's about the flanders red but when you ask about the uh, specific difference of this one compared to odbrun yeah uh, i think odbrun is a like it's it's really brown it's not reddish brown it's actually brown and uh it has more complexity from the malt and it, i mean it's more expressive so it it might have some kind of deep uh like deep toasty nutty and some kind of chocolatey notes uh and never roasty though okay it's never roasty yeah. yeah okay um but yeah um uh, that i feel like odbrun doesn't have this uh, uh acidic acid uh in the same intensity as what you see in the flanders red uh, uh and it's more okay. like a like a multi tart beer where this is like a fruity tart beer Oh, I see. So, so yeah. yeah. Right. So so the malt kind of uh, you know it's a star of the show. Uh you get tons and tons of malt flavors but just a little bit of acidity in the background. Uh and uh and one important thing about Old Brown is normally they were like aged in warm stainless steel tanks, not the fooders. I see. Okay. But if you go to East Flanders, uh, you you might see uh some bottles from petrus uh, or mm-hmm. um even some other producers i think they kind of make versions that are aged in oak as well yeah i mean uh, you want to yeah. crack this open um yeah sure all right here we go i mean as you can see this is already like 7 um, years old so i i cannot expect a lot of head um uh, and i mean it, it it's a sour beer uh, the yeah. sourness kind of like the 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 low ph kind of kills the head as well and yeah true that and i'm, I'm i don't know if it's this this could be bottle condition too right i mean i it's it's tricky cuz some are bottle condition and some aren't okay looks very clear yeah this is almost like like dark amber to light brown yeah not actually brown but like kind of like in between yeah uh like maybe dark reddish to light brown yeah you can say that Yeah, it's quite clear and just barely any head. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do you think? I I I'll let you go first. I mean, you um you haven't tried this before. Uh definitely a lot complex, uh but then right off the bat I get that, you know, vinegar like acidic note. Uh but it's not too intense. It's just there uh along with the lines of um plums maybe. Oh yeah. so it's plums and the vinegar like note coming through at the same time same intensity um but yeah so far i've got those two i'm still trying to dig through man this is really complex there's also yeah yeah like there's so so many things going on in this like this uh, even the expression of fruit is not one dimensional which i really yeah. love because like you know as it warms up it kind of like opens up into these different spectrum of fruits like i get some like tart cherries like big black cherries. black cherries and yeah something reminded me of the creek the creek lambic 
yeah it's, yeah, it's yeah, very yeah. Resembl- uh, resembling that so those you know dark cherries like you said plums uh, and i i really get this uh, like like a toasted sourdough bread oh yeah so, and 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 it's uh, uh and, and also almost like a dark honey you know it's like a dark honey and kind mm-hmm. of like a touch of that molasses um, or those oxidized uh, malt expression of like figs and prunes and sometimes i i get dark cherries but i think it's it's more like a more like a nail polish remover you know ah, it's, it's yes yep i i do get that and this one as well all right let's give it a taste all right let's see it's got some kick to it oh yeah the first sip is definitely um, a little puckering in your mouth i think in terms of the <clears throat> intensity it's pretty much the same um the first thing i get is that that sourness from the um acidic uh, acidic acid it's pretty much like a vinegar uh, winous note um also it kind of resembles like a red wine uh, flavor profile as well um and again some cherries yeah some prunes in there um there's also a bit of funk to it that acidity is definitely sharp um it's very sharp you know the expression of this one uh, uh acidic acid compared to lactic lactic is more like a soft acidity like a yeah. bright tartness but this is it has like a, a a sharp edge to it this one burns when you swallow it too aggressively it's like got that kick in the yeah, aftertaste it's, it's, in the it's in the throat. definitely there yeah i agree i mean you, you know it, it's more like that fruity red wine that like uh, like you said yeah. those fruit fruit flavors are dominant uh, and the acidity is dominant and then comes the malt in in the background kind of like supports with a little bit of that sweetness and some kind of that toasty bready note some maybe a little bit of that, that dark honey caramel note uh and yeah i think it's more like that you know toasted sourdough bread put some pickled cherries on top of it uh and uh maybe some throwing some figs and prunes it just absolutely that that that, that is what i i think this is about and and i think i really love the the overall flavor balance where it's 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 acidic but it's not it's not puckering it's i mean it's like a slow sipper yeah. for me but it's not like like really puckeringly sour that i won't be able to drink it's not the case it kind of finishes dry i love the dryness i love the acidity in the background kind of lingers in the uh, finish and after taste um but yeah, i mean what do, what do you think of this in terms of flavor profile what do you think is the most dominant character for you um sarnis yeah that's like pretty obvious right like that's the first yeah especially on on the palate it, that's the first thing that hits you it hits you like a train it rams into you that's the first thing you get and after the first sip uh, your palate sort of accustoms to the sarnis and then the sarnis goes down a little bit bit by bit but then it's very very delightful i can't just stop sipping on it um also there's no there's barely any carbonation in this one some carbonation would have helped it for sure to unleash something else but then yeah did you know this was this is 87% alcohol no idea i haven't I even just, looked at it yeah. oh yeah that's crazy you know like kind of like that sourness acidity can really hide uh, the alcohol percentage and especially for a beer like this this has been aged in oak for like i think Three years, more than three years, wow. and now it's been sitting in the bottle for like seven years or something. Yeah. Oh wow. So that's definitely there's definitely so many things going on because as the beer ages, there's a lot of flavors that transform throughout the age as the beer gets oxidized. In terms of mouthfeel, like like you said, the carbonation is like pretty pretty flat. Uh, not much going on. Uh, it's not prickly. Um, it's kind of like really really low. And uh, um, even the body is like probably medium light. Mm-hmm. and yeah. uh, there's that kind of uh like i wouldn't say astringent but there's kind of that tannic dryness mm-hmm. like you know that that maybe when you're sipping on a tea you get that kind of that that tannic dryness you know i mean compared to a red wine red wine has more tannic to it so this is in terms of intensity it's um a bit lower than that yeah so because uh, it's definitely there though it's not it's not ruining anything per se but then it's going in line with everything else but this can also remind you the the acidity can also remind you of a kombucha like an aged kombucha oh, uh, kind yes, of that yes. acidic character that kind of yep. comes in 
um, but obviously this is straight from uh, the footer and that's why the perceived acidity might be higher than your typical flanders red did you enjoy it oh absolutely uh, <laughs> i mean your your glass tells the story so yeah, there you go <laughs> how did you enjoy it i loved it i mean this is this would be like a slow sipper for me like if i feel like i don't want to binge drink i just want to like sit back relax and just mind my own business and kind of like have a drink yeah. as a sipper i'll definitely do this especially on a on a warm day summers yeah i definitely feel like i needed this beer today because yeah. i'm really enjoying it now and i'm glad that we've popped it open yeah you kind of like was, quenches your yeah. thirst and yeah i was craving for a good to good beer today and then yeah this pretty much seals the deal for me awesome cool yeah that's all right um all right so uh and um, that's about it uh, we're going to catch you guys for another episode cheers cheers